Assalamu alaikum sister. Thank you for um, posting such an honest question and, you know, being brave enough to do that because a lot of people do struggle with things like this and they're not honest enough to say. Um, and I think that your question will help so many people. I'm, what I'm going to share with you is my most sincerest advice and from, honestly, from a place of love. And, and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him and guides you and repairs your marriage. First of all, as I'm reading your message, and I'm talking about me doing counselling now for well over 15 years, the main thing that is happening here is probably about yourselves and an underlying issue that's going on. This seems like a secondary thing, you know, whether he's has done it or he's trying to do it for attention, the root you have to go back to the root. So when we when I speak to couples who have had infidelity issues where there's been some cheating, it's really hard for the person who's been cheated on to be able to and the cheater to be able to sit down and say actually the issue is with our relationship, and it's hard to hear that because it almost feels like well, no, there's no blame on. And there isn't, the, the choices that that person made is theirs entirely. But if there's um, some accountability within the relationship that's not taken into consideration, then you can't take a, a cheating in a vacuum. So what I'm saying here is, you know, often people cheat if they're lonely, people cheat if they're bored, people cheat if they don't respect their spouse, people cheat if they um, have trust issues. So those are the things that are actually happening in the relationship that then cause the external thing. So go back to your relationship and think about, you know, um, what's happening between us? Why do we not have that connection? Why is my husband, whether he's actually done it or not, trying to do that, obviously trying to get attention from you, whatever he's saying, and then ask, you know, you've got to work on that. Is there some truth in that? I know that you wrote later that you are giving him attention. So it sounds like your viewpoints are different. You know, you're probably thinking that I am giving attention and he's thinking it's not enough. And that's the things that you have to work on. So to bring my point home, often what people will do, they'll focus on what's wrong, you know, so that, you know, he's we're not communicating or his behavior or her behavior or cheating has happened or something's happened and how do I deal with that instead of trying to think about what needs to be right in our relationship that then these things wouldn't happen so trust has to be right respect has to be right dignity you know honoring one another being able to talk about your feelings being able to you know, express differences in a respectful way. To see in yourself, do I have defences? Am I quite harsh? Do I listen well? And vice versa, the spouse has to do that also. Um, and I would leave this as a, as a general rule for anybody that listens to this. I know we have devices in these this day and age, and some people are like, oh, we know we're open about our devices and. We share everything and if you've got that as as a couple fine you know if you've come to a mutual agreement that your phones are open to each other and there's not an underlying issue of trust that it is just like you know i'm happy for you to see my phone you're happy to see mine okay however a person's phone is a private matter and from an islamic perspective we are not allowed to we are not allowed to go into our spouse's phone without permission and we should not have, you know, suspicion. So those are the things that are the roots of our, you know, the principles that we have to adhere to, despite what test we're going through, because it would be classed as spying. My general advice when people ask, when couples ask me around phones is that you shouldn't be going to each other's phones. And part of that is that ultimate trust that we're believers. You know, if we are doing a sin, in private, then Allah's concealed that. It's not for us to go look for that. And you know, I see it all the time that when we do do that, we actually open up a can of worms and we hurt ourselves. Things that we don't need to know, we know, 
and then we bring on a burden on ourselves. Instead, what we should be looking at is that if I have a suspicion or I have a doubt, that's the thing I need to work on. Like, why am I feeling suspicious? What are the signs of that? Is there something internally in me? Has my spouse given me, has done things in the past that indicate that they might do that again? In which case, the issue should be about solving that, forgiving, moving forward, rebuilding trust. If you're still having doubt, then there's still an issue in the relationship. And all you do is from that issue, allow yourself to fall into further sin. And that's what we don't want. The thing we don't want in the marriage is that it leads to further sin and that you are or they are a cause of us falling into the sin. Does that make sense? So we're supposed to be garments to one another. We protect one another. You know, we shelter one another. And that's from ourselves too, you know, from our own suspicion, from our mistrust. And it should be vice versa. So really think about that, that I'm in a marriage and the last thing I want is, you know, through this marriage that I have further sins. You know, whether that's the way you talk to them or the actions that you take because of them. Remember, when we start to do that, when our actions fall into sin because of another human being, then it's almost like those minor shirks that can happen. Allah is our center. Any action that we take, we say, what does Allah want from us right now? Not because of the whims of our feelings or our desires, not because of our spouse or our children. We make those choices based on what does Allah want, as difficult as that is. And that's the test. That's the test that the believer endures in those moments of pain. That in that moment you say, no, I'm not going to do a thing just because that person's done a thing, because I want to save my akira. And you know, when one person makes that change, there's a ripple effect of goodness that goes through. But if everybody, it's like these minor little things that happen. One person does this, another person does that, and nobody wants to understand. But we can really shift that pattern. If one person makes that choice that, no, I'm going to not do that. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be God conscious. I'm not going to mirror my spouse when they're doing something that isn't something that Allah loves. For example, what you described about that call. Allah doesn't love that. Allah doesn't love for us to, you know, put fear in our spouse or to make them feel doubt or to trick them, you know, or for, for us to instill in them, you know, put them in a position where they want to actually record us. Like, I can't imagine how you must have felt when you did that. You must have been so afraid. You must have had so much doubt. And these things come from shaitan. So remember that actually the test here is not about him, but yourself, about your deeds and who you become as a person. And if you can make those choices in those moments to be better, not for him, but for the sake of Allah. And when we do that, we rise above our problems. We find that inner peace and it's not subjected to the marriage or the situation. It's subjected to who we are and, and, and our connection to Allah and the choices we make because Allah is the centre.